Hello everyone, Prime here, and I hope that you've had a great day, because today we're going to be covering some abilities from the lore behind the Gods of Smite that should have made it into the game. So starting things off here, we're going to talk about Kumbakana. You see, during his battle with Rom, Rom removes his arms and his legs, and you'd think most people wouldn't be able to continue fighting after having that done to them, but Kumbakana crawled to a mountain using his face and bit into it, chewed out some pieces of degree, then using his tongue as a siege weapon, he still decimated Rom's army, using nothing more than his face, tongue, and whatever other body parts would remain after having his main four limbs cut off. Somehow this didn't make it into Smite, and instead we got a Root, which, I mean, I suppose references his strength, and of course his ultimate also references his strength, but this is a specific example of something that could have been incredible to put in Smite. You could have still had this Root, it would have just made more sense lore-wise, or just connected his lore a little stronger, but no. Hyros dropped the ball there. You know where else they dropped the ball? My good friend Loki. You see, in Smite, you know, he follows that assassin archetype, but really, Loki was more of a trickster, I do whatever I want sort of guy, rather than someone who specifically went out to cause harm. I mean, of course, you know, towards Ragnarok, okay, yes, he did specifically cause a lot of death and a lot of mayhem, but prior to that, not really. So, why he doesn't have the ability to shapeshift, because he shapeshifted a loss, the most famous time being when he shapeshifted into a horse and uh, gave birth to Slepnir, why is that not in the game? Come on, hi -res. Okay, you gave it to the Morrigan later down the line, but you could have still given it to Loki. I mean, it would have been interesting and a bit more sensical than giving us Assassin's Greed Loki. Next up, we have Aphrodite. It was said that merely gazing upon Aphrodite, or one of the fears of Aphrodite, was that merely gazing at her would infatuate any man to the point where they just wouldn't be able to control themselves around her. Case in point, she shows up around a mortal shepherd, and the two of them do grown-up stuff together. It would have been nice if there was a more direct references. In game. Okay, you do have when Aphrodite kisses you, you get stunned if you're an enemy, but Medusa has a skill whereby if you look at her whilst she's ulting, you get stunned. Ra has a skill where if you look at him whilst he's using his two, you get a flash, cover your entire screen like a flashbang. So why Aphrodite couldn't have a skill like this, I have no idea, and it would have been perfect lore-wise. Next up, we have Apollo. Now, Apollo is this ladies' man, player-style character in Smite, and I don't know how lore-accurate this is, I'm still in the process of researching Apollo for that Apollo lore video that's coming out soon, but he was known to uh, throw around some curses and a bit of pestilence here and there. This is referenced nowhere in his kit directly, you know, I haven't gone through his voice lines, but as far as I remember, it's pretty much purely just the ladies' man stuff, right? That's that's the whole aesthetic of his kit, his in-game look and design, that's his everything. There's no reference to Apollo the Cursebringer. Why is there no reference to Apollo the Cursebringer? That would have been awesome. And I actually don't know if he was called Apollo the Cursebringer, I'm just saying that just because, but yes. And another god who, to be fair, the high -res might not necessarily have messed up entirely with, but could have gone a better route, referencing one of their hmm, more, shall we say, prestigious feats, Gabrakan. Gabrakan would spend most of his days picking up mountains and chucking them aside as if they were just nothing. We have no reference to this in Smite. We have reference of him destroying mountains, but not picking them up and throwing them around, merely crushing them. And I'm sure technically, you know, you pick up a mountain and chuck it aside, I'm sure it's not going to be in the best of conditions, but still. It would have been nice if he had a skill where he grabbed a god and threw them somewhere. A bit like Tiny from Dota. No, no one plays Dota. I'm sorry for mentioning Dota. So up next, we have Shibalonke, and specifically I'm including Shibalonke here because I remember a comment, uh, i see if I can pull it up here, that essentially said, why does Shibalonke use bolas rather than blowguns as his main weapon? Which is a good point. I mean, Shibalonke mainly used blowguns in a lot of the stories in the myths that he's in. We see him use blowguns in his kit, but he's an ADC. His main weapons in Smite are his bolas, not the blowguns. 
so high res dropped the ball there. The only way I could possibly justify high res not using actual blowgun darts as Shibalonke's main basic attacks is the fact that a lot of the basic attacks in Smite are fairly large. You can usually see the projectiles flying, and that helps you kind of duke them, evade them, and, you know, just know that they're there. If Shibalonke's were significantly smaller because he's firing darts rather than Bolas, that might present a unique balance issue. Of course, in-game, the blowgun darts don't seem that small, but I'm assuming that's why Hyres didn't go with blowgun darts. Also, his ultimate should be a lot more useful. They kind of... I can see the connections that his ultimate sort of makes with his lore. Can we all agree that his ult is among the most useless in Smite? Ooh, I have to stand still to avoid being sunned. It's such an inconvenience. Ugh. No. Throughout his story, Shibalonke showed off how intelligent he was and how much of a tactician he was. We could have had an alt referencing this, and I think that's probably what this alt was trying to do as well, but it didn't do that. So, no, this alt should not be what it is and should show off Shibalonke's tactical genius a bit more. Now, next up is something that I think could be more fun, more so than the lore would be upset with not being included, but. We have Giannis. Now, you see, he had two faces, one which represents the past and the other which represents the future, and Hi-Rez has referenced this in-game. He gets a 20% uh, like damage buff or something along those lines last time I read the passive it was that, whenever he changes faces, which you probably don't notice when he changes faces, but he does change faces whilst you play him in-game. However, what I was thinking was that you can press a button and change the faces manually, and what this will do is reverse the portals, so enemies can go through the portals, but allies can't, and of course Giannis can still go, go to and from the portals at his own will. That would spice things up a bit. You could, if an enemy was standing next to a wall, you could shoot them out of combat, you could still of course put portals under their feet, but you could also put portals under allies' feet. Now that's, that just seems fun. Bit of a trolley thing there, but you know. And so yeah, you could also accidentally help enemies out, but but it seems like a fair trade if you can just turn off the ability to allow enemies to go through portals. So there's that. Last up, we have Sobek. In Egyptian mythology, at some point, there were children drowning in either the Nile or some other body of water. Can't quite remember which. But Sobek invents a net, or creates this net, and gathers up the children who are drowning in this water and rescues them. He's a guardian. This net skill could have been used as any sort of CC. Yes, it's not in the game. And instead, we have a few skills which I suppose loosely connect to his lore, but the net would have been a direct reference to it. So I'm not sure why Hyros dropped the ball there, but they did, and it's quite unfortunate. Also, I don't talk about Loki that much, so I want to talk about Loki again. Loki was considered to be the god of fire. Hyros does not do anything with this at all. I mean, you could argue that Aim Strike looks a bit red, and you could argue that maybe it looks a bit. No, it's not fiery. It's clearly nothing to do with the flames, no. No, not at all. Whilst Loki is carrying Aizen away from Fajazi, it was a long story, Loki's fault. If you want to know that story, check out Loki's lore video. But Loki is fleeing from Fajazi, and to get away, the gods create this kind of barrier of flame. Loki gets past the barrier of flame, no problems. Fajazi burns to a crisp. Fajazi being a frost giant, I believe, if memory serves me correctly. So yes. Loki could have had some sort of fire shield, fire repellent ability, fire manipulation, nothing. He has nothing of the sort, so hi res, you dropped a lot of balls here. A bit late to pick up all your balls, because your balls are all over the floor and it's just a mess. Oh, well, that's actually not that much of a mess, but Paladins is more of a mess than this, apparently, so I guess you're golden on this front. But that was the video. If you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to see more content just like this, you only need to subscribe if you haven't done so already. But thank you for making it this far. And tell me, which abilities from Smite or the lore of the gods behind Smite do you think Hyres should have used in game? Of course, I didn't cover a mm, extremely large portion. I think it was good enough. But yeah. and yeah, tell me that in the comment section below. Last note here, I did not mention Sol, because in a similar video to this, I also brought up Sol and some discrepancies I had with her kit, but now that I've mentioned her, why her chariot isn't an ability in Smite feels like a really missed opportunity. Another ball that Hi-Rez drops, and should probably look about picking up soon, rather than later. Maybe if they introduce her brother? 
then they can give him a chariot skill. And then Sol can be all, well, where's my chariot? And he can be like, well, you're not good enough for a chariot. And that could be an awkward joke. And of course, now that I think about it, Norse mythology is full of gods who Hyros really dropped the ball on, not mentioning any names whatsoever that begin with O and end with N. None whatsoever, but yes. Oh, and by the way, before Jolly Old Prime forgets, Merry Christmas, guys. I think I missed the opportunity to say that whilst Christmas would have actually, you know, during Christmas, but I guess it's never too late, so yes. Merry Christmas. I hope you did enjoy yesterday, or the day before yesterday. Not sure when I'm going to post this video, but yeah. Until the next video, have a very good day. I have been Prime, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.